What was that? Did you say something? Do you want to go on a magical mystery tour? Along the Roman road? Hear about some witches? Visit the land of the giants? Hear about some ghostly knights? Let's go! I think the legends here were best captured by Catherine Parsons, who was exploring Cambridge witchcraft, Cambridge Shear witchcraft. And in 1952, she released the manuscript. And I'm gonna read a tiny piece of that now. She goes on to say, in Horseheath, witchcraft is by no means a lost art. In this parish, we have ghosts as real as they ever were. Superstition is rife. The wise woman is fresh in our memory. We have our folklore, certain interesting customs and cures for almost every ill. The parishioners tell us that there were always witches and that there always will be because they are mentioned in the book. The most infamous of Horseheath witches goes by the name of Daddy Witch and it's said that she was an ancient bony creature always dressed in rag and always had her familiars beside her or tucked in her clothes. When she passed away, her body got buried in a place called Garrett's Close, uh, now separated from Horseheath by the main road. After many, many years, a road was built over her burial ground. But it's said that even when it rains to this very day, that that piece of road never gets wet due to the magical energies that her body still produces. And speaking of magic, we are now going to bank round these fields and pick up the 2000 year old Roman road, which heads for 10 miles into Wandlebury. So I'll see you all in the start of that trail. We are at the beginning of the Roman road. 10 miles that way, it's Wandlebury. But here right now, I just wanted to jump on camera because like, this place right here just epitomizes why I love British folklore. Now it just looks like very you know, average fields. You know, it's all you can see. Um, you can hear the buzz of the road. You can hear planes going overhead occasionally. But you know, 100 years ago, just 100 years ago, and further beyond that, like this was Witch HQ, and it was reported that witches and wizards from all over East Anglia and beyond used to come here to celebrate, to have ceremony, um, presumably practice magic, and have these amazing dances together. And it was reported that they'd all be seen flocking away in their various directions, and, and certainly in varied states of kind of um, perspiration you know, in the morning after. And I just think that's such like an evocative image um, of what used to happen here. And, and that's just why I love folklore. Like it's, it just, the imagination of, of what kind of was here previously. Um, and I, I just love that essence of village life as well, that, you know, they would ask the local witch to come and bless these fields. You know, they'd lay uh, gifts for a good harvest and they'd obviously come together at the end of that and celebrate the harvest if it was bountiful. So just really beautiful moments. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited to kind of be standing here and, and talking to you about it, but obviously just thinking about it as well is, yeah, is the reason, like I said, why I just love, I love folklore so much. Um, so I'm gonna carry on the walk now and um, yeah, check in, check in in a second. See you all shortly. I've just popped in this woodland for two reasons. So number one is just a little bit of a disclaimer. Maybe some, some honesty is more accurate. I call myself an outdoorsman on YouTube, which I am. I, I love the outdoors, but I'm certainly, I'd say the laziest outdoorsman on YouTube. Any opportunity to sit down, have a drink, have a snack, enjoy the scenery, I'm there. Like count me in. Secondly, woodlands like this are dotted. So in terms of where we are, we're in between um, Horseheath and Wandlebury. In the kind of district of Linton, if you're looking at it on a map, um, on that sort of section of the Roman road. And it's a really important area because again, the folklore in these woodlands are so rich all around this area. And it was reported that you know, again, this sort of hundred years ago and, and a little bit further, that sort of time when 
sort of fairies and witches and bog creatures and creatures of the wood were just so prevalent in everyone's imagination or real. And these woodlands were inhabited by Yarthkins, which were, or which are, these really long kind of spindly woodland creatures. And it was said that if you were to walk past a woodland like this at night time, you'd get pelted with apples um, by the Yarthkins. And they were typically quite unruly and didn't take well to people. They're quite solitary creatures. So they like to stay in the woods on their own, you know. And again, I just, folklore for me isn't about if it's real or not. That's not the point. It's these stories that get handed down after generation to generation and they engage you with nature like immediately and I think that's the most important thing and I think as a people now like we're so global I don't think anybody really likes no, maybe that's the wrong word I don't think anybody really calls like home a home anymore I don't think there's many people that can really say I feel at peace and at home here and I think maybe it's because we've lost a lot of connection to our home to our lands and these folklore tales and stories like they're a little part of that that I think are so easy and so important just to to embed and to to cherish and that make like a woodland like this or a walk like the Roman road just come alive. It's not just a road or a path or a field or a woodland. It's where the Yarthkins live. You know, it's where the witches once roamed. It's where the giants lay in the gogs, you know, and all of this wonderful imagery that, that gets conjured up by these stories. So I'm a big fan, obviously. And um, the Lazy Outdoorsman, which could be my new YouTube name actually, is gonna continue the journey. So just arrived in Wandlebury and greeted by this gorgeous avenue of trees as you come off the back of the Roman road. Wandlebury itself is actually just behind the camera and um, you know there's a main entrance, there's a car park, there's all that good stuff and you could really spend the whole day here with the family, like no problem at all. And if you wanted to come here on your own, like there's gorgeous walks all around Wandlebury and different kind of routes that you can take and, and places to sit, you know, in, in woodland and stuff like that. So. You know, it's a really nice, nice spot to come and visit. Um, but the reason why I visited here today is for the folklore. And there's a really amazing tale that comes out of Wandlebury um, from the Iron Age hill fort that was built here by the Iceni tribe uh, 2,000 years ago-ish. I need to brush up on my history, but um, I'm gonna go and try and find that spot. So I'm gonna head into Wandlebury now. Um, and try and find a good spot for us to, uh, to recount that tale. So I'll see you all shortly. I have leapt upon this tree stump like some little woodland sprite to tell you the next piece of this story, um, which is linked in the name Wandlebury. So Wandel um, is a name for a spirit or demon. And in East Anglian terms, at least, it, um, Wandel means the frozen land or the winter that never ends. And that's a really neat little analogy or segue into the main part of this story, um, which we're going to go and visit now. And I'm sitting on one of the many entrances of Wandlebury Ring, um, which was obviously the ditch built by the Romans or the Iceni tribe, um, which encloses uh, or would have enclosed Wandlebury Fort. Um, but now it's just some cafes and things like that. But we're going to go in there now and explore the main part of this story. I couldn't resist coming to sit under this apple tree to tell you the final piece of Wandlebury, given that earlier we discussed the Yarthkins tossing their apples out to passers-by from their woodlands. But that's not a part of this story right now. And the final piece of Wandlebury um, is about a great night that in this enclosure after his death in battle, 
on his great steed would roam in spirit on horseback. And legend grew about this, and many, many years passed, and challengers would come to face him by coming into this enclosure and, and calling out at night time, at a full moon, night to night come forth, night to night come forth. And in 1211, a challenger rode in here and challenged the great spirit of this night. That challenger won after a fierce battle. And amazingly, the great knight's steed remained. So the challenger rode home on that very horseback. He got home undressed and amazingly was unscathed. But that night, every single year after that event had happened, a great wound would appear in his thigh. And that ties back in to the, the meaning of Wandel, of that never ending winter, you know, that never ending wound. And I think that's just quite a neat uh, connection between the two. No idea what that means, um, if it means anything at all. Um, but just a fascinating place, um, full of magic and history. And I'm going to head now across to uh, the Gogmagogs. And I actually think, although separated by name now, I think in some history this was all part of Gogmagog Hills. I'm, I'm not too sure, but um, you know, I hope to find out some more about that. But yeah, just going to cross over the road now and um, I'll see you on the other side of the Gogmagog Hills. So we've arrived at Gogmagog Hills. Here we are. And um, before we get into the history here, I just wanted to reflect on the journey itself. So it's been a long walk and uh, it's been a really lovely walk as well. Like it's flat, it's easy going. It's 10 miles ish. Um, but it's not really about, um, I guess, the picturesque views on this walk or it's, it's about the tales and it's about the stories and it's about what's hidden behind the scenes. It's that living landscape that I, I wanted to come here for and do this walk. And if you wanted to come here, there's also, you don't have to do this straight. It's a Roman road, right? It's start, finish, um, and it's pretty much as straight as an arrow. If you wanted to kind of come here and just explore Gogmagogs or Wandlebury or even Horseheath, you can do that quite easily and there's parking at all of those points just to come and explore those those places but back to gog magog itself th there's a few varied stories about this place um and the one i'm going to go with on this video um, and they're all fairly similar just with some slight variations that gog and magog are two giants a god and a goddess and it was reported that up until about 1700, you could see these figures cut into the turf of the Gold Magog Hills. And the Cambridgeshire folk would come and, um, you know, have ceremonies here. They'd come and have music, uh, rituals, festivals, you know, all kinds of things to celebrate around Gog and Magog. And very similar to what we've explored earlier, just to give back to the landscape, just to be, you know, I guess at one with nature, with its rhythms and tides. Again, something that I just find a continual thread with, with sort of folklore, tradition, and stories, and I think that's just, just so wonderful. There's a really cool piece of, um, well, maybe it's just that I love how this then spreads out. So in Saffron Walden, um, which is a local market town nearby, there's a picture um, above one of a, an antique shop, or which used to be an antique shop, depicting Gog and Magog, in other stories, it's depicting Tom Hickathrift, who was a, a giant slayer. But regardless, I just like how the kind of tentacles of, of folklore and the same stories just spread out across the, the sort of multiple villages and towns. And, you know, it's like I said earlier, I think to really get into this mindset of these stories, you have to imagine what it was like back then with, with no cars, with no sort of busy main roads of, sort of days of horse and cart and stories traveling by word of mouth. I, I just think that's super magical. And um, yeah, speaking of magical, the, the sun's setting here on the Gogmagog Hills and it's been a really amazing walk. And 
I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've taken something from it and thanks for watching. And um, lastly, I'm just gonna leave you with some, some pictures of the sunset and uh, see you all soon for another Magical Mystery Tour.